Hey guys, so in this new series, I'm going to be taking everyday things apart and showing why they work in an easy to understand way. My main goal is to produce videos that require very little prior knowledge so that people of all ages can watch. I'll also be showing different prototyping techniques along the way. Here are some examples of the types of things we'll be looking at. A variable transformer, a surge protector, a soldering iron, a phone charger, a mechanical counter, and a variety of different sensors. I'll also be showing how this off-the-shelf levitating platform works in a later video. Hey guys, so today we're going to be looking at this electric bug zapper. And the reason I chose this specific bug zapper is because the circuit inside is seemingly simple, but requires a good grasp of many different concepts to fully understand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it apart, and then I'll show you guys how and why it works. Now let's take a closer look at the circuit. The circuit starts with the push button that connects the batteries to the board. This transistor plays a major role in the oscillator of the circuit that I'll explain later. The LED is just there to show that the circuit is on. The resistors are preventing the transistor and LED from burning out and we call these current limiting resistors. The transformer is stepping up the voltage from the batteries and is also involved in the oscillating part of the circuit. This diode is rectifying the voltage coming out of the transformer and we call this a half wave rectifier because it's only filtering half of the wave out. This capacitor here is storing a lot of the energy from the rest of the circuit. Once it charges up completely it just sits around and waits for an unsuspecting bug to make contact with the metal mesh. This resistor is called a bleed resistor and its main purpose is to drain the capacitor when you're not using the bug zapper so you don't accidentally shock yourself. As I mentioned before, the right half of the circuit here is oscillating. If you take a meter to measure the frequency, you'll see that it's oscillating about 4,270 times per second, or 4.2 kilohertz. Before I explain the circuit and the bug zapper, let's take a look at this Jewel Thief circuit. So here's a battery, here's a push button switch. These two lines indicate that this is an iron core transformer, two coils. These dots are called phase dots and they indicate the start of the windings. Now you'll see that the start of this coil is joined with the end of this coil. We'll see why that's important later. Now down here we have a resistor leading to the base of an NPN transistor. Now we have the base, the collector, and the emitter. And if you're not familiar with the transistor, it's basically an electric switch. Just like this, except it's controlled through the base. As current starts to flow through the base of the transistor through the emitter, the collector begins to open and allow current to flow through the collector and out the emitter. So when we press the push button, current begins to flow, and it can't flow this way yet because the collector is still closed because the transistor is off. So the current flows through this coil, through this resistor, through the base, out the emitter, and as it does this, the collector begins to open. Now the transistor isn't just only on or only off, it can be partially open, which is what's happening right here. The collector begins to slightly open, and as that happens, current flows through this coil, through the collector, out the emitter, and as it's doing that, we have a changing magnetic field here. And changing magnetic fields induce current into all nearby conductors. So the current flowing through this coil induces a voltage through this coil. And that adds to the voltage that is being supplied to this base. And because of that, the collector opens up even more. So what we have is a feedback loop here that this coil is opening the collector more and more until it's, the transistor completely turns on. And when this happens, this field is no longer changing. The magnetic field in this coil is no longer changing. So it collapses. And when it collapses, it collapses in the reverse direction. 
Therefore, it subtracts all that voltage it was adding to this coil from the coil and thus from the base. So the base voltage drops below the transistor's turn on voltage and the whole circuit shuts off and starts again. So it's this huge loop. Now, one of the main things that this is used for is right here. It's interesting to note that the voltage across these two, when the field collapses, is higher than the battery voltage. So a lot of the times a Joule Thief circuit is used to power an LED, a light emitting diode. So you can have a 1.5 volt battery power an LED that requires 1.85 volts or more by using a circuit like this. Okay, so now we have the circuit that's in the bug zapper. The only difference between this circuit and the Joule Thief circuit we just went over is that now we have an LED here to show when the circuit's on, and we have a secondary coil here that outputs high voltage alternating current. Now this diode here is just acting as a rectifier. It's called a half wave rectifier, and it's filtering out the negative humps of the alternating current. So it's only letting the positive portion come through. And as it does that, it charges up this capacitor here. And two, there's two wires coming from one end of the capacitor. And those are connected to the outer metal mesh of the bug zapper. And the other end of the capacitor is connected to the inner mesh. So this resistor here is called a bleed resistor. And its purpose is when you're not using the bug zapper, it drains this capacitor. And you want that so you don't shock yourself when you're not using the bug zapper. Now you might be wondering how we're getting 1300 volts from such a low starting voltage. And it's as simple as just the number of turns in the primary coil versus the number of turns in the secondary coil. So N1 is the number of turns in your primary coil. N2 is the number of turns in your secondary coil. This is the voltage in the primary. And it's as simple as this equation here to determine the voltage coming out of your secondary. It's important to note that transformers only work with alternating current. Because there's an alternating current, there's a constantly changing magnetic field here, and it induces a voltage into your secondary. Without that changing magnetic field, you won't get an induced voltage. So this does not work with DC. This is exactly why we need the oscillator in the circuit to begin with. The Joule Thief is very important because without it, this wouldn't have any voltage to charge the capacitor. One last thing I'd like to mention is that when I was explaining how you can use the Joule Thief circuit to light the LED, I forgot to mention that the LED is not constantly lit. It's just turning on and off so fast, thousands of times per second, that you perceive it as on. So I just wanted to mention that. Hey guys, so I hope you liked this video, and if you have any suggestions for future videos or questions about this video, just leave a comment below, and I'll see you next time.